So the medical term for squint is strabismus. And this is when there is a misalignment between your two eyes. So when you're looking at an object, both eyes aren't pointing in the same direction. This can be a very small deviation, so not something that someone would notice, but might be causing you symptoms, or it can be a larger uh, misalignment where people notice that your eyes aren't pointing the same way. For some people, it's intermittent, so only occurs occasionally. Uh, for example, in people who have intermittent exotropias, they may notice that occasionally an eye drifts out, and this can be worse, for example, when they're tired. Or it can be there constantly, so one eye is constantly pointing in the wrong direction. It can also switch between your eyes, so some days your right eye may be turning in, and other times your left eye is turning in. For many people, although their eyes aren't pointing the same way, they don't notice any particular symptoms, but for others it can cause problems uh, with double vision and affect their day-to-day -day function. Depending on which way the eye is deviated uh, depends on how we describe it. So if it's turning outwards, we would call that an exotropia. If it's turning inwards, we would call that an esotropia. Upwards, a hypertropia and downwards a hypotropia. So in most people who have a squint, there is no significant underlying cause. This is a, something that they have had since they were young or have had the tendency to have since they were young. So for example, if you're a child who's long-sighted or what we call hypermetropic, your eyes will have a tendency to turn inwards and in fact, if we give you glasses, that can often help control the eye turn. Equally, if you are short-sighted, as you're getting older, you may find that your eyes want to go inwards as well. If you have an eye which doesn't see as well, or has had amblyopia, then that is more likely to actually drift and develop an eye turn with time. For these people, often they don't have any symptoms of double vision, but obviously they will notice that their eyes are misaligned. Other people can acquire uh, squints. So one of the common causes that we see is due to a nerve palsy. You have uh, three cranial nerves controlling your six eye muscles and if one of those becomes temporarily paralysed, which for example is more common if you're diabetic, then this would affect the eye muscle. So an example of this would be a sixth nerve palsy that affects the outer eye muscle that means that the eye would suddenly turn inwards and cause you horizontal double vision. Neurological conditions can also uh, affect your eye control. So if you have problems with myasthenia gravis or multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's, you can find that you get various eye turns uh, or problems with double vision. There are also conditions that can affect the eye muscles themselves. So in people with thyroid, they can get thyroidi disease, which is an inflammation of the eye muscle that causes the scar tissue and can affect the way that the muscle works and again cause problems with the eye turning and double vision. So botulinum toxin is a very useful tool to ophthalmologists who treat ocular motility problems. And there are several scenarios for us when it can be helpful and we use it in all ages, from the very young to the very elderly. So one of the common reasons that we would use botulinum toxin is in a patient who couldn't have squint surgery. And that might be because they don't want squint surgery, or because they're not fit enough to have a general anaesthetic, or equally uh, because the eye is not suitable to have squint surgery. So that can be because they've had multiple operations on their eye muscles before, or they have other eye conditions, which means that we wouldn't advise it. The good thing about botulinum toxin in these cases is that although it wears off, it can be repeated as many times as is necessary. And often with repeat treatments, the muscle itself that we are causing to relax shrinks. And this means that the treatment lasts longer and can be less frequent. We can also use botulinum toxin in other scenarios. So one would be if we're trying to mimic the effect of, squ of squint surgery. So for example, 
If we were concerned that doing squint surgery may make your double vision worse, we might use botulinum toxin in the first instance in order to essentially demonstrate whether squint surgery would be helpful or not. Also, if you have an eye problem that we think would be temporary, like a nerve palsy temporarily affecting a muscle, then we wouldn't want to do something permanent, but we may use botulinum toxin to help your symptoms whilst your eye naturally recovers. So botulinum toxin is a drug that many of you will be familiar with uh, by its trade name Botox. Botulinum toxin has been used by ophthalmologists for many, many years. In fact, way before it's been used by the cosmetic industry to treat wrinkles. So we have a lot of experience with using it. Essentially, it works at what is called the neuromuscular junction. So this is where the nerve connects to the muscle and tells the muscle to contract or relax. By paralyzing the signal going across this junction, it essentially stops that eye muscle from contracting and temporarily paralyzes it. The good news is that botulinum toxin wears off and so then it regains uh, the ability to move. So when we're using it for eye turns or squints, what we're doing is we are going to inject the botulinum toxin into the eye muscle to temporarily paralyze this. We do this as an outpatient day case procedure your eye is numbed with local anaesthetic and a very fine needle is passed into the muscle. We use a machine called an EMG machine and we place some little electrodes on the skin around the eye and what that machine does is it measures the signal in the muscle. So by getting you to move your eye, we can check that the needle is placed in the correct position before we give the botulinum toxin. So botulinum toxin has been used by ophthalmologists for many years, so we know it's very safe. There are some very few side effects which include the following. So we pass a very fine needle into the muscle, but if we accidentally catch a blood vessel, this would cause a bruise. So you could get a bruise affecting the eyelid or the white of the eye goes red with what we call a subconge hemorrhage. Fortunately, this is something that resolves within a couple of weeks. We give the same dose to everyone uh, to their eye muscle to begin with and that this can actually cause a variable effect. So if we're paralysing an eye muscle because your eye is turning outwards, we may find that one dose of botulinum toxin doesn't correct it enough and so the eye doesn't align as we would expect and we need to either repeat that or treat a muscle, for example, on the other eye. Equally, if it's very effective, you may notice that your eye turns in and overcorrects, but as the botulinum toxin wears off, this would realign itself. If the botulinum toxin spreads outside of the muscle sheath when we're injecting it, it could temporarily paralyse some of the other eye muscles and cause an eye deviation that we weren't expecting, or if it affects the eyelid, temporarily cause a droopy eyelid or ptosis. Again, as the botulinum toxin wears off, this would also wear off. One of the very rare complications that has been reported is that it could potentially damage vision. So if the needle accidentally went inside the eye, uh, this could cause this problem. This is extremely rare and the patients that it happened in were those that had had previous retinal detachment surgery and had more complex eyes.